What kind of a message does President Biden want to convey to Turkey with all of his decisions, including the recent recognition of the Armenian genocide? Well, I think the first 100 days of the Biden administration uh, on the Turkey front, the main goal was to establish a bit of healthy distance with, with President Erdogan. The feeling with the Biden team was that under Trump, the relationship had become hyper-personalized and chaotic at the presidential level. And I think you also see with the comments on Turkish democratic backsliding and human rights concerns, uh, and then, of course, the recognition of the Armenian genocide, a desire to sort of right-size the U.S.-Turkey relationship and say, yes, we're treaty allies, there are certain interests that overlap, but also we have a series of, of concerns and we're going to voice those uh, very honestly with you. Yeah. In, in their recent phone call, President Biden and President Erdogan agreed to meet in June. Will the uh, U.S. president make his red lines even clearer to the Turkish president? I think it will be interesting. I mean, first, the meeting you, you mentioned is on the sidelines of the NATO summit in June. And I think that was very intentionally chosen to, to convey to Ankara that the U.S. right now sees this relationship as almost exclusively uh, the NATO alliance, that all of the other sort of sinews that had connected the U.S. and Turkey have really been harmed by almost a decade of democratic backsliding and Turkish unilateral actions in, in the region, including in Syria mm -hmm. uh, and in the Eastern Mediterranean, some of the, some of the sort of um, escalatory actions they've taken. I don't think right now there's a great deal of strategic alliance between the U.S. and Turkey. Mm -hmm. You know, traditionally, the, the main factor has been cooperation in confronting Russia. But, of course, Erdogan's decision on the S-400, as, as well as Turkey's vulnerability to Russian actions in Syria, mean that Turkey is sort of compromised in U.S. eyes right now. In this practice of carrot and stick, however, which we are discussing, to anchor Turkey back towards the West and form a, a working relationship, the, is the U.S. administration perhaps prepared for more stick, for example, looking at the Hulk Bank trial, which is about to kick off in May? You know, the Hulk Bank trial is a very big disruptive factor. But the interesting thing is that's not something that President Biden can really interfere in. This is a case where... U.S. officials have conveyed that repeatedly to the Turkish officials that really the White House can't intervene in judicial proceedings of this kind. I think that given how politicized the Turkish judiciary is, Erdogan has a tough time believing that. Um, but it's really true, particularly after four years of a real democratic backsliding in the United States under Trump. Um, certainly Erdogan will be furious and it poses a major risk to Turkish banks.